So, Savannah, are you ready to make your voices heard? That was Democratic presidential hopeful Kamala Harris in Savannah, Georgia, Monday evening. Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? Meanwhile, her primary opponent, Republican hopeful Donald Trump, was in Pennsylvania. Together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. We will make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Pennsylvania. As the clock ticks, the calendar pages flip, and we close in on Election Day in November. The campaign has taken on a more and more surreal flavor. And for more on that, we go to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which may well be a very influential location in this election, to speak with Professor Tony Montero of the Philadelphia Saturday Free School. Tony, so it is the most unusual anyway. I guess we'll have to use the term election because that's what everyone is using and that's the form it seems to be taking. But what kind of election is this? That's a good question. Yeah, um, well, I guess we can say off the top, it's, a, it's an election in the midst of two major wars, both of which the United States is directly involved, both of which the people doing the fighting, the Israelis in the Middle East against the Palestinians and, and Arabs, uh, and uh, the Ukrainians, uh, in uh, the uh, Eastern Europe are proxies uh, in what looks like forever wars once again. And there is preparation for a third war in uh, the South China Sea and the Taiwan Straits against China. Mm. So already it's unusual. Uh, the last time the United States was having an election in the midst of a world war was 1944 uh, with the re-election of Franklin D. Roosevelt. We are on the cusp of world war, perhaps nuclear war. At least there are threats of using nuclear weapons uh, from all sides. Uh, and so we're having an election where the uh, one candidate, the vice president, Kamala Harris, uh, represents the uh, status quo of war. And Donald Trump, of course, without consistency, and this must be said, represents something uh, less than going into a total war. Now, along with this, is one of the most significant inflationary uh, spirals in the U.S. economy since the late 1970s. Yeah. Uh, so this is very unusual. And then, of course, the ruling class is more united politically than it ever has been. Now, that doesn't mean that every single person who we identify with the ruling classes on board. But we have to say that about 90% of them are with Kamala Harris and are committed uh, to breaking the will and uh, the back of the Trump candidacy. Uh, the other thing is we're having an election where they cannot even begin to act like uh, a open discussion is possible. 
of the mainstream media overwhelmingly are supporting Kamala Harris and uh, are attempting to destroy Trump. The other thing is the amounts of money that have been raised already for the Kamala Harris uh, campaign. I would suggest that it's upwards and maybe a little bit more than a billion dollars and over the next uh, month and a half could reach something like a billion and a half unprecedented amounts of money. And then if all of that were not enough, we've had one uh, assassination attempt against Trump and another one that was being prepared uh, to assassinate him. And the suggestion by many is that this is not the end of the assassination attempts against Trump, which if he wins will only uh, be intensified. I don't think we, we have ever seen anything like this. I don't believe that any nation has seen an election like this. What all of this suggests for the future, it is very difficult to say. Something that struck me while you were speaking, the fact is that polling data in the U.S. shows Harris and Trump more or less neck and neck, and that kind of concurs with a lot of other data uh, between Democrats and Republicans, etc. In Russia, who was on the other end of the war in Ukraine, the March presidential election showed President Putin the favorite of something in excess of three quarters of the electorate. Yeah, that's true. I mean, first of all, this is, as you point out, this is a war, both, none of these wars the American people want. And they ask very clearly, Where's all this money for war coming from when there's no money uh, for the needs of the people at all? And um, as we've said on many other occasions, uh, this is a crisis of legitimacy. Uh, in a uh, recent poll by the New York Times, 70% of the people said the government should be uh, radically or fundamentally reformed, with 15% of them saying uh, it should be brought down and something completely new built. Uh, now, saying that is not to say that people have a clear view of what should be built or how we should reform the government. But what it does say is that the ruling class faces an unprecedented crisis of legitimacy. And that means every one of its institutions. And that's why with all of the determination of the mainstream media, uh, they can't get Trump out of this election. Uh, the other thing is, and this is very significant, given the electoral college, uh, there are seven, I would suggest, three states that will decide the election. Uh, about 100,000, maybe 200,000 voters in the three uh, industrial states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin could decide this. Most observers are now saying Pennsylvania will be the key state to win. Uh, and if you say Pennsylvania, uh, what will decide Pennsylvania is Philadelphia. And what will decide Philadelphia is the black vote, which leads me to the conclusion that anywhere between 30 and 50,000, and I wanna emphasize this, black male voters in Philadelphia could decide this based upon who they vote for or whether they vote at all. Uh, that is a very small number, given that maybe uh, uh, something uh, close to 150 million people will vote. 50,000 voters 
black male voters in Philadelphia could decide the next president. Wow. 50,000 out of 150 million. That's that's right. You got that's right. 150,000 or five out of 15,000 or one at one out of every 3,000. Wow. <laughs> that's a very powerful voting block right there. Well, in a divided country. Right. That's right. Where we elect presidents by electoral college. Yep. And in a tight race like this, yep. what black voters do in Philadelphia, Detroit, and Milwaukee could decide everything. Yep. And power at the margins, and particularly in a divided uh, you know, grouping like this. Tony, right. thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. We'll speak with you again next week. All right, man. Thank you. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.